We've already done quite a number on them, obviously. <laughs> the captain is the last one. The gods smile upon you today. And he is done for. Okay, guys, welcome back. So, uh, once again, the same as last time, we're not really going to talk about most of the Empire because nothing's really happening. With the exception of Mistrand, there is now a plague there, which really, really annoys me. I was trying to get the population high enough so that we could go to the next level of city, and why I cared about that was because we could actually have higher level um, cavalry staples here, which could get us some Crimson Riders. But um, that is not going to happen as the population plummets. Um, I think Pad Reichsbarg uh, can also get the higher level cavalry buildings. Yeah, it looks like they can. But they're also not exactly there yet either. So we're just never, we're never going to have, we're never going to get access to those Crimson Riders ever. No matter what. There might be another settlement around here that can get them. Like, maybe Stana Westa get them? Let's see, lesser horses. Oh, maybe Stana Westa could. Oh, but their population's lower still. Yeah, they could get them, but their population's even lower. Okay, well, anyway, never mind. I just pointed it out because I was annoyed. But anyway, all of the rest of the, like, the south here and the east is, as you guys have seen it before, nothing really to look at. So, we get to the north over here. No, actually, I was going to start off in the south. Hold on a second. Readjust. Okay. So now back at Burwidu, uh, which when I left you guys last, basically we had attacked the place with Ulysil's forces, but he had to retreat. I guess he didn't have to. I could have just thrown my guys at the doors, but I didn't think it wise, so I withdrew. Now, he can't actually reach it this turn with all of his forces. In fact, um, his forces are quite chopped up at the moment, and I probably should explain why. Uh, basically, I did have the backup army go and besiege Burr Widu, like I said I would. But I was really apprehensive about leaving them there to besiege the place, because I thought the dwarves would almost certainly sally out and attack them. So I sent Ulysil's cavalry on ahead to join them, because then I figured, okay, well, we can shoot them in the back with arrows, especially since we also have this one here. Chariots can run them down, war guards could hold the line. We could probably win that if it came down to it, though we might suffer a bunch of casualties. But then it occurred to me I could probably leave the, ca the catapults behind and bring the rest of his troops up here, and I could, but just barely. Like, I couldn't actually reach the backup army. I could only reach, like, this little corner right here. But that's still close enough to be within reinforcement range of each other. But I think with this setup, basically, we'll, we should prevent the dwarves from actually sallying out this turn. And then the next turn, we can withdraw both of these forces, rearrange everyone's troops, and attack Bur Widu. Mighty General. Um, I actually have a couple of Spearman units in here now. Giznog, as he was passing by, basically recruited them and sent them to the backup army. But they don't have enough movement points to join Ulysil, so they're staying with the catapults for now. Meanwhile, Giznog's mercenaries that he was bringing from the east, all those Variags, um, have now left him, and they're going to join the backup army. Actually, they have the movement points. We might have them, yeah, we might have them just join Ulysil's army and be part of the attack, or at least... Orders? At least that Variag warrior unit. I don't know that we need more cavalry archers. But anyway, Giznog is now heading towards his new post in Ara to be the governor there, like I said, basically to recruit... Um, mercenaries. I also just remembered that this area, when there's no army standing here, is actually uh, dark, and I can't see what's going on, so I'm just going to drop a watchtower there before I forget to do so. And of course, Gizlik is here. Um, he's still just still a couple of turns behind um, Ulworth the Legend, but he is catching up. Now, since he does have the Warblades and the uh, Red Dragons, I kind of want him to actually fight against the Dwarves. So I'm going to have him just bypass this area here and go right to Northwatch, while Ulworth actually fights Dale. 
And so my hope is, is that basically Gizlik will attack Northwatch, and then he'll come over here and probably attack Erebor. Possibly assisting Golgo, since there are like three settlements here anyways. But we'll see. Meanwhile, again, Ulworth will concentrate on Dale. And as you can see, Dale does have some substantial forces in the area, so Ulworth is definitely going to have quite a battle on his hands. In fact, I'm almost thinking... I might have the chariots from Gizlik's army actually join Ulworth. But I think the chariots might be more useful in, like, field battles against, like, Dale. Well, I don't know. I think they would be useful against the dwarves, too. It's just that we're not fighting a lot of field battles against the dwarves anymore. It's mostly siege battles. Well, we still have a couple of turns to decide that, because he is a couple of turns away still. But anyway, that's what's happening there. And So that doesn't mean, or that does mean that we're not going to fight at Burwidu this turn. We'll have to wait until the next turn. But as I'm sure you've already observed, Ulworth the Legend is besieging the city of Lonsdale, and that is the battle we are going to fight this turn. Then we have Golgo here. He was heading straight for Redfall, but I did have him turn slightly to the east, because as you can see, the dwarves, once again, seem to be eyeing Redwater, but this has happened numerous times in the past, and they haven't actually gone to attack it. But I did decide to have him go slightly to the east, just in case we needed to abruptly turn and intercept them. Because, I mean, like I said that I would be okay with the dwarves taking away red water while I conquered down here, but the conquering is finished. And so, um, you're not allowed to have red water anymore. You, you missed your chance to do that. I just realized that there's actually a dark spot here, too. You know, maybe I'll have Giznog just kind of wander over here and place a watchtower over there just so that we can see what's going on over there as well. So anyway, that's what Golgo is doing. He'll either intercept this dwarven force, Captain Nar. I swear, this is the same force that keeps eyeing, it keeps like advancing towards Redwater, but then stops and, and goes back. But anyway, Golgo is either going to intercept them or he's going to attack Red Hall or he's going to intercept them and then attack Red Hall and just... Get over here and finish off the Dwarves of the Iron Hills so that we don't have to worry about them anymore. Alright, so anyway, with that all out of the way, let's get in here and attack Lonsdale. Basically an Axeman unit and two Spearmen units, so not exactly the largest garrison we've ever fought. But um, at the same time, I'm hoping one that is very susceptible to arrows. <laughs> because... We're so used to, you know, the dwarves and having to take, like, barrages, just raining arrows down on their heads in order to kill any of them. I'm hoping we can kill these guys a little easier. All right, so let's get right into the battle. Okay, guys, welcome to the battle. So, uh, we actually don't have a gate on this side which was kind of interesting when I saw it. Yes, but no matter, we're going to break down three bits of wall and just get in there and let them have it. Um, I guess we won't have that catapult fire again. So we've got... Let's see, is this the... One of the spearmen units is in the center of the settlement. The cowardly enemy cannot hide. And here are the other two. Begin the slaughter! Now, I can't help but notice, though, that this is actually a fair bit, well, further away than it is in the Dwarven Settlement, so I'm not sure how many catapults, or how much catapult fire we're going to be able to use against them. The cowardly enemy cannot hide! I guess it depends on how close Begin the slaughter. they agree to come to the walls. I, mean, I do see some of them coming over there, so maybe they are, maybe they are about to come over here. Let's get these guys forward as well. As well as our cavalry on this side. Oh, whoops. Uh, no, no, no. My bad. Um, archers. You guys get over here. And cavalry get over here. I will tell you guys to fire at will. Just because while it's unlikely they'll actually get within range, we might as well be ready for that possibility. Let's have the infantry just get a little closer here, too. 
And you see, here they come. Units. 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 Okay, those guys are not firing at will. That's good, because Units. now that I think about it, I am just going to uh, have the cavalry throw javelins at them once they get close enough, because I think they're heading towards this bit of wall there, so... We'll throw javelins at them, which will drive them away. And then we'll tell these guys to fire at will so that they can shoot at them as they leave. So that seems inevitably what will happen. Yes, great lord. And yes, as you can see, even bringing the catapults nice and close, we still can't hit the center of the settlement. Units. All right, and the catapults are all here now, though, so we can actually target that unit there. Um, I'm actually not going to put them in guard mode, because if they retreat back, I I think it's okay for the catapults to move forward if they need to. Alright, javelins away. And actually, um, let's get the archers firing as well. Oh dear, they're actually not coming back towards the archers. Well, that's annoying. Get back over here. You're supposed to retreat in this direction. Oh, they're going the wrong way. All right, you know what? Go into guard mode after all. Ah, uh, look, look at... We just devastated this unit. This is... This feels weird. How could we have devastated them so much? Oh, that's right. They're not dwarves, and they don't have two hit points each. Plus, you know, thick, heavy armor. Oh, well, we got some of them there. What we might have to do is actually just push inside without using up our catapult ammunition, which is, I know, practically heresy at this point, but um, we might have to if they don't agreeably, you know, kind of stand where we can hit them. I guess we'll tell the, we'll tell the cavalry not to fire anymore. We'll just wait for them to come back. Speaking of waiting, um, we are just going to be sitting here bombarding for a while, so I think I'll just let you guys go, and I will bring you back once the bombardment is over. Okay, guys, welcome back. Cavalry. And uh, you may be surprised to hear this, but we've actually hardly fired any shots at all. In fact, this is probably less than, like, 20 seconds after I, I told you guys that I was letting you go. But, um, it's pretty clear that the enemy is not going to obligingly just kind of stay within range of us. Oh, we did, um, throw some more javelins at the spearman unit, which is why it's mostly dead. But basically, I'm going to send in this cavalry unit here in the hopes of basically trying to lure this axeman unit down to where the archers can hit it. In fact, I'm half tempted to just send in the archers right now. I half tempted. I think I'm actually just going to do it. Here, we'll have them go like right here. And then we shall have the cell swords right behind them. The general's bodyguard over here. And yes, I know, again, heresy. We're not going to be using the rest of the catapult ammunition, but it just doesn't look like that's going to happen. So, oh well. They're just not going to stay. Why do I hear? I, I told you to stop. I told you to stop. Do nothing. Okay, very good. I did see that it had an icon saying that they were firing, but I had already told them to stop in the past. Even if they had the firing icon, like, as long as you didn't actually see them starting to fire, it was fine. But um, I heard, I heard the, the ominous creak. I was like, what's going on back there? <laughs> All right. Our units are all here inside, and yes, I do see the Spearmen of Dale back there. Oh, you know what? We won't use our javelins on them. We'll just have our mighty general intercept them. All right, now, while they're doing that, let's see if we can get the Axemen of Dale to get over here. Or barring that, we can throw some javelins at them. Yes, they're very tired, and there's only seven of them left, so 
That shouldn't be an issue. Come on. Come on down here. I know you want to chase after the cavalry. No, don't lie to me and say you don't want to. Archers. Cavalry, get over here. Hurry, uh, hurry up, hurry it up. I may have just killed a few of my cavalry there. Okay, only one of them died. All right, phew, good. There we go. Now the archers can just eliminate them. And there we go. <laughs> and we only lost one of our cavalry to that. Um, I Actually, did we kill them or did they kill them? I'm going to say the enemy killed them because it just makes me feel better when I say that. All right, so now let's get our archers up here with the cell swords behind them. And, of course, our mighty general on this side as well. I think you guys all know exactly what's going to happen. Um, we won't need our cavalry, so I guess just both of you kind of line up over here. But anyway, that was quite effective. Like, what, three or four volleys of arrows and we had completely obliterated this unit? That is what I like to see. And not what I hope to continue to see going forward in our battles against Dale. Such a breath of fresh air from, you know, when we had to fight the dwarves. Not that, you know, I, we're, we're going to fight many battles still against the dwarves. There's still multiple settlements of theirs left. Um, plus, the dwarves of Erebor have yet to fight us even one time, so obviously we're going to have to fight them. But I'm still going to enjoy my battles against Dale nonetheless, purely for the change of pace, where, you know, arrows just immediately kill them. All right, looks like everyone's lined up. So, archers. Fire at will. <laughs> Look how many of them we killed. I think that was a full unit, and they went down to like 96 men. Second volley, they go down to 58. Another volley. <laughs> There's 19 of them left. Oh, don't worry. There will be plenty of rest for them with the hundreds of arrows just flying into them. We still had plenty of ammunition in the catapults, plenty of ammunition, you know, for the archers. I mean, it says zero, but remember, we did lose one, one cavalry man there. And of course, he didn't heal. Just one guy and we couldn't save his life. Oh, well. All right, but anyway, let's take this back to the campaign map. We have conquered. Okay, strangely, once again, no one seems to live here. It's always really strange to me. Like, some settlements obviously have plenty of people in them, but then, like, I keep running across these settlements where there's literally no one here. Like, did the AI have the, like, tax rate up so high that, like, the population growth was, like, in the negatives or something? And that's why there's... Because 400 is the minimum game will never allow the population to go below 400 so like this is basically the equivalent of zero <laughs> there's there's no one here when it comes to like recruitment or or anything like that and obviously like you can't exterminate or enslave or anything either so it's like nobody's living here and it's like i assume the ai must just have the tax rate so high that population just doesn't exist here all right anyway we are going to occupy the place and we are going to... Oh, that's right. They would have their own sets of, like, weapon improvement buildings, too, wouldn't they? As well as these ruins that I keep finding around the map, too. I think I've mentioned them in the past, but basically, these are always completely damaged. Like, condition 0% when I take a settlement. A settlement that has them, anyways. 
and they can't be repaired. Like, if I add them to the repair queue, then they're just damaged again by the time uh, the next turn rolls around, rather than being repaired. That's our first settlement taken from Dale. I was going to say it's our first blow struck against Dale, but that's not true. Uh, you may recall, I think it was... I think it was Golgo. Yes, I think it was Golgo's army that won this famous battle against them. Where we basically just decimated their army in the field as they dared cross the borders into our territory. But, which, by the way, while I don't really need um, justifications for, you know, any of the wars we fight, because, you know, we start off at war with basically everyone. And of course, the world belongs to Sauron the Great anyways, and so we're simply asserting the natural order against those who rebel against it. But at the same time, I do just want to point out that Dale struck first. <laughs> they invaded us, and so we are simply defending ourselves by conquering all of their territory. All right, but anyway, it looks like that's going to be it for now, so I will let you guys go, and I will bring you back as more of interest occurs. All right, welcome back to the war. So we are going to start up here in the north, and then we'll work our way south and west. Uh, we will, as usual, not have to discuss most of the Empire, as nothing too much of interest is really happening. Up here in the north, we've got Golgo, the legend, who is heading towards Red Hall, and he will be there shortly. I don't know if Captain Glowin is going to try and intercept him, or if he's just going to become part of the garrison at Red Hall, or even maybe retreat to Angorodin. But there's certainly going to be a battle there probably next turn. I mean, unless, again, he becomes part of the garrison, in which case, I guess... Well, no, because then we would still attack. Because we can. I think we can actually reach it. Meaning we could still attack next turn. Not that I'm looking forward to that. They've got their catapults, they've got enforcers, they've got vanguards, they've got all these skirmishers. Plus they would have a general and his bodyguard... That actually seems quite awful. <laughs> that seems pretty darn awful. And I'm sure you've already observed, once again, I, I assume this is actually what was Captain Nar's forces, the ones that kept like heading towards Redwater and then retreating, heading and then retreating. Well, obviously they didn't actually go for Redwater. Shocking, I know, for like the, what, fourth or fifth time now? They would, you know, approach... I guess, come close enough that they could attack, but they never actually do so, just retreat. And now I'm afraid they have lost their opportunity, because Golgo is here to finish them off. Because I believe these are the last two settlements of the Dwarves of the Iron Hills. I could be wrong about that, but I doubt it. Alright, then just a little way to the southwest... Well, actually more, more west than south, really. We have Olworth, the legend... Uh, he just finished taking Lonsdale. I think that was last turn, probably. And I think that's probably where I left you guys off, actually. And so he's heading towards Grasgard, along with his backup force here. Now, we do have quite a number of Dale's forces in the area, and I sort of assume that this is all of Dale's settlements, though I guess, you know, they could have something else over here. But, um... Yeah, this is all... They have quite a lot of troops here, and so uh, Olworth is going to have his hands full, killing all of them. We do still have Gizlik here, who is may hopefully going to bypass things and just start heading straight for the dwarves of uh, Erebor. So if necessary, I'll have him stay here and assist Olworth. Um, especially if, say, like this army here came south and was like threatening Lonsdale or Barg. Then he could jump right here on the ford and intercept them, or um, at least tempt them into attacking him on the ford. That would be nice. If they bypass him and try and go to Lonsdale, for example, we could then attack at that point. Because, I mean, yes, I think this army would be better suited to fighting the dwarves. I, I'm pretty sure they could still fight anyone. I mean, the only difference between this army and an army that, like, I would say would be one purpose-built to fight humans would be maybe replacing the Warblades with either war guards or just regular warrior units. So it's not like Gizlik couldn't fight like an army of Dale or anything. I just sort of would prefer if he like, swung north here, went to North Watch, and then got to Erebor while Olworth takes his force and fights most of Dale. 
So again, if necessary, Gizlik will assist. Uh, let's see. So now we have Ulisil, who is going to take Burr Widu this turn. And th yes, this is the battle we're going to fight. This time, they do not have the forces to survive. My and uh, especially since we're bringing in more archers than I think we've ever brought in before. I think when I last left you guys, basically I had Ulisil and like his backup forces just kind of scattered through this area, besieging the place. But we've now consolidated down into an army. Basically, all of the cavalry archers that he had available, except for I think there's a small unit there, are now in his army. Um, some of the depleted cell sword units, as well as a couple of the spearmen units to be our brave, brave front line in the battle. As well as a couple of Variag units to back them up, along with our typical archers and catapults. My liege. Of course, all the rest of the forces are over here. I wanted to bring that Variag warrior unit in too, but they couldn't quite reach, so they're just going to have to sit this one out. Orders? We also do have a couple of cell sword units coming. Uh, Giznog recruited them, and so he's sending them over here to join the backup army, and then we'll push north here and see if we can find any elves. And that's really it. Nothing really to talk about in the rest of the Empire, except for Mistran still has plague. So, let's just get right into the battle here at Burr Widu. Two skirmisher units, four miners, and the tattered remnants of a hireling spearman unit. So, let's just get right into the battle. Welcome to the battle. Your soldiers are through the enemy walls. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. Anyway. To finish the defenders. Okay, it looks like both of the warsmith units are outside the center of the settlement. That is grand. I much prefer that. Units. Where they can be hopefully shot by our catapults once we're done destroying some of the walls here. We have miners there. That unit is pretty badly depleted. I guess this would be the unit that I would want to target, because I think it's full. Well, mostly full. We did besiege them for a turn, so there is just a bit of yes, units. Units. damage done to the unit there. All right, catapults forward. Units, not units. Use fire. Use fire. Actually, we will also just bring these guys forward, I think. This is basically all of our infantry back here. We have our depleted cell swords, the axemen and the sword unit in front with the general's bodyguard, spearmen behind them, and then the variags behind them. Right, but now this is rather convenient, though, because they have that warsmith unit right there. So why don't we pull forward with our archers? Infantry archers on the right, cavalry archers on the left. And we will have them just bombard that much smaller unit over there. Just a few volleys, we should be able to whittle them down even further. We should be out of range of them ourselves. So, guard mode, fire at will. Oh, you guys are not close enough. You guys, can you target this unit here? Some of you can, some of you cannot. Who cannot? You cannot. Stop where you are. I imagine that unit will move soon, so we'll just kind of leave them as they are. All right, you guys go ahead and just fire at will. And now you guys go ahead and fire at will as well. Ah, excellent. Look at the damage we did to them. Wow. We really did damage to them. Not as much damage to these guys, I have to admit, but they were also just a bigger unit anyways. All right, now, can we bring this catapult unit forward just a tad? Actually, you know what? Why don't we just bring them all forward? I mean, since they could walk out of range anyways, we might as well bring them as close to the walls as we can. Bring the infantry archers forward just a hair as well. 
with this withering fire on both sides, we should be able to shoot any units as they approach. And I don't think we'll be... Well, we'll we won't try to conserve our ammo too much. Uh, just because they don't have a lot of units. So there's no one in particular I want to target other than Warsmiths, who are in the back there anyways. This Warsmith unit is more or less destroyed, though... Oh! They're coming back. Units! Units, cease fire! We'll wait until they're well within range of all of the archer units there, and we'll see if maybe we can finish off that unit altogether. There we go. Now we can fire on that warsmith unit with all of the catapults. Yes, come right within range. Okay, good. Uh, those arrows went a little wide, I have to admit, but there's only four of them left. And there we go. <laughs> Hundreds of arrows later, and they're all dead. Oh, um, guard mode for them. Oh, wait, stop, stop, stop. I see that unit <laughs> started walking before I had managed to put them in guard mode. Where are they going? Hey, no retreating! Get back over here! Ah, I see the, the miners have returned. Alright, so you know what? What I think we'll do is, once we've driven these miners away, or perhaps killed them all, because I have to admit, um, that's a lot of dead dwarves there. Um, we might just start pushing in so that we can lure that warsmith unit closer to the walls. One survivor. One survivor as he flees. All right, fine then. Oh, hey, they're coming back. Units. Oh, um, and now they're turning around. All right, well, you know what? We'll just do it then. Um, let's see. Do not fire at Units. will anymore. Units. Units. Do not fire at will anymore. Let's see, let's bring our infantry Units. forward, and I think what we'll do is we'll have them come in this side. Units. And just to avoid having the uh, the warsmiths throw their axes if they choose to come up the hill again. If they choose to come up the hill again, that's a quite the if. The one dwarf who survived on that side, I think I see him standing all alone up there on the, the top there. As well as these 12 hirelings will not be able to stop us from getting in there. All right, you guys can run out. They just tire so easily that I don't want them to, like... I don't want to tell them to, like, run basically anywhere unless we're already in battle or in combat. Um, Cavalry, why don't you guys just kind of move off, off to the side there? You're kind of disrupting the formations. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I'm disrupting them anyways. All right, just, just get over here. All right, we will send in the much weakened cell sword units first. Units, Actually, I do also think that they go from fresh to warmed up very quickly, and I think that's probably intentional, and just takes them a little while longer to get to like winded units. and such. Mighty general. All right, and now we'll send units. in the spearmen as well, move. plus Ulysil. Ah, oh, the hirelings still are not moving. The, the one miner's coming back. I've got this, guys! Never mind the entire rest of my unit that lays strewn out dead on, on the side there. Oh. Oh! Well, I should probably have paid attention to this. Ah, this must have been where I actually attacked last time. And so, of course, the wall is still damaged because I didn't give them an opportunity to repair them. Oh, the hirelings have retreated. Let's see, are the... Is, oh, no, no, the one dwarf is still here. Infantry. Quickly. Infantry. Quickly. Infantry. Infantry. Attack. Quickly. Infantry. Hurry. 
Oh, did they kill him right on the charge? I guess they did. Well, all right then. Units, move at the double. All right, where are those dwarves? Okay, they are coming from over here. We will have our archers over here Units. shoot them to death. In fact, why don't we have them get a little move closer? The oh, they're actually not coming down here. Well, all right then. You know what? We're bringing our archers inside then. The we will have the these guys Units. sit over here along with these guys as well as our mighty general and then we'll bring in the variags on this side whoops both variags on this side actually we'll bring them in right over here and then we'll have the cavalry archers also get in here oh the miners have stopped excellent because I can't help but notice they've stopped right within range of the archers I really want... Why don't you guys get over here? Because my catapults aren't going to be of much help now. Because uh, while I still have tons of ammo, they're just kind of sitting out of range. And they don't seem to want to come within range. And of course, at this point, with all of my troops in here, I can't use my catapults anyways. Because that would simply result in their deaths. Alright, archers, fire at will. And then we'll have... I have this variag unit kind of get over here since I assume it's quite possible. Oh, no, never mind. I thought they might charge down the hill after the archers, but they appear to be retreating. Okay. Cavalry archers, you can charge in here. And what we'll do is, is we'll have the cavalry archers maybe go up over the hill. In fact, that's exactly what we'll have them do. You guys get over here. And you see they'll come over the hill here. And then we'll have them charge into the center of the settlement, well, central area of the settlement, from this side here. Oh, oh. Oh, now they are approaching. Okay. Variax, over here. Actually, um, yes, Variax. Plus one of the Spearman units. Basically, what we'll do is, is we'll have the Spearmen intercept them here. Infantry. Let's see, the Variax stand over here and we'll basically surround them. And stop firing. Spearmen charge forward. Um, okay, I was going to say, you guys are stopping, right? Oh, they're routing! Okay, there we go. The other unit is coming. All right, and all of our cavalry archers are over here. So let's bring them now. Units, double time. Bring them Units, now. Double time. There we go, like so. Infantry. Kill them. Oh, dang it. We didn't get them all. There's still one guy left. Okay, well, that's fine. Units. Probably. We will need the cavalry archers to retreat somewhat quickly if the enemy gets over here and starts, like, throwing axes at them. Or we could even split them up, actually, and have half of them, like, go that way and the other half go that way or something. All right, cavalry archers, just go ahead and fire it. Well, you guys get back here because that minor unit is approaching. Oh, no, that minor unit is actually going the wrong way. You guys get over there, and these guys get back over here. All right, let's have the cell swords cross. Shall we? No, 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 we shall not. We shall have the archers get over here. Get these cell swords over here, along with the spearmen as well. Uh, let's see, Variags over here. Mighty General right here. Actually, Mighty General right here. 
Alright, we'll have that unit fire at them. Did we do a significant amount of damage? Eh, I guess it was decent. Okay, there are the warsmiths over there. Oh, wait, where are you guys going? Come back! Oh, wait, wait, no, don't fire it well. <laughs> They're really uh, having uh, some difficulty thinking about it, aren't they? Okay, there are the warsmiths. And if we had just, if they had just come forward and agreeably been eliminated right away, then we wouldn't have to go back and forth, back and forth like this. Maybe I should send this unit forward just to engage the miners and get them to stay here. Okay, you know what? Here, here. Stop shooting at them. Infantry. Maybe it's just the being shot that's causing them to retreat. All right, there we go. Let them have it. And we'll have these archers help that cell sword unit. Ooh, they're coming. Excellent. Okay, you archers now fire at them. Fire at them. What we'll do is just we'll have Mighty General assist those guys now. Fire at them. Fire at them. All right, there we go. Okay, Mighty General is in the back. Okay, our cavalry archers are not under threat. Wait, shouldn't they be, though? Where's that other minor unit? Oh, wait, no, 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 that was the one that charged forward here. They're currently engaged with our troops over here. Okay, good, and it looks like we're going to be able to fully eliminate this unit. We've already done quite a number on them, obviously. <laughs> the captain is the last one. And he is done for. Right, where is Mighty General? Okay, he is in the back. Alright, well, in that case, let's get some harassment going here. These guys get over here. I hear someone's running. Alright, they look like they're actually all going to be caught and killed. Hooray! Very nice. All right. Still have ammunition in our archers here. Okay, what are these guys going to do? Oh, they're going to hit the higher lanes. Which is fine. I guess we could just eliminate them. And then we can fire on the dwarven miners. Um, guys, <laughs> kill him. There we go. Very good. All right, you guys retreat back across the bridge. You guys actually can just stay there for now. Oh, no, they're coming back. All right, fine, fine. What we will do then is, is let's bring all of the cell sword units forward along with the archers. Along with the archers. Yep, there we go. As well as Mighty General. That will be more than enough to finish off the defenders. And yeah, they're not firing it well. Okay, very good. I was going to say, you guys are chasing them quite far. You see, what we'll do as well is, once we're ready to fire with our... Infantry archers will bring the cavalry archers right back in again. Which actually will be ready here in just a moment. We actually might have to wait, because... Oh, no, no, the miners are coming back nice and quick. Missiles. Units. Go ahead and reform your lines, or your units. Okay, they are now within range of everyone. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and start bringing these guys in, and they can go ahead and fire at will as they come in. Then we will have the infantry archers start firing. And that should lure them down here towards our units. You can see the cavalry archers, at least some of them are firing from the back there. But I don't think they will be needed. And there we have it. Sweet indeed. And all the sweeter for being so decisive. Another dwarven settlement falls. To the Dark Tower and to the great loyal forces of Sauron the Great. Yes, figures those guys would have inflicted some casualties. They were the only ones who really got to fight. <laughs> I think that was the minor unit that was standing there at the bridge. They managed to kill 14 of our sellsword axemen. Um, let's see, on our own side, for once the catapults did practically nothing. In fact, oh no, we did have them firing for at least a little bit, so that's probably when they killed those six guys. But the war bows, the horse archers... They basically did all of the work, apart from, again, that one Axeman unit that managed to chop up a few dwarves themselves. Alright, but let's take this back to the campaign map. Yes, we have, and I can't say they're very happy, but at the same time, there's almost nobody to kill here. I guess we will just occupy the place. I guess we could retrain those sellsword spearmen, couldn't we? All right, but anyway, um, we already discussed the campaign map, and there is nothing else, no other battles or anything to fight. So I will let you guys go here, and I will bring you back as the war continues.